Um, so I ran out of space on the camera or phone after the last one, so this is just me continuing what I was saying. So I was just hammering on about the point what is Eric's style of avoidance? Um, it's a thing people debate all the time in mold groups, and often they're, when they debate it, they're focusing on um, either what to call toxins, or am I correctly identifying and perceptifying and unmasking and using those concepts the way Eric used them. But like I pointed out, I think that we should look at part of why Eric created his concepts and listen to his words, not just his actions. I mean, it's important to look at his actions too, but I've seen people argue with Eric and say, well, you created this not just as a scientific thing, but to save your own ass when you're getting really sick, which of course that's true, but there's no reason it can't be both. Um, and Eric always had the intention of, you know, maybe I think making a lifeboat, metaphorical lifeboat to go back and save others after he saved himself. And he always had the intention of designing this as a strict scientific experiment that was just so obvious and so uh, designed well that people would have to see the specific variable he was pointing at, which maybe didn't work because unfortunately scientists aren't all paying attention to the right things, even if you have a really well designed experiment. But you can't say that he didn't try and you can't say he didn't put compelling evidence out there. So to me, Eric style avoidance means not just doing avoidance right and perceptifying and unmasking and avoiding super small amounts of the bad stuff and having a MECQ mobile environmental control unit, but it also means doing this with the intent to do what Eric has done and confront researchers, confront people who um, aren't taking this seriously enough, and um, get to the point where they are forced to do this research and where uh, there's funding for this and where we solve the big environmental problem that's causing all of us to get sick, rather than just uh, counting on a few of us recovering so well that we can live in an increasingly toxic world. So when I th think who deserves to call themselves an Eric style avoider, it's people that are doing that, who are also paying attention to that tenet of his work where they're focusing on the big picture and trying to change things. No matter how good someone is at avoidance, if they're not doing that, I don't know if that counts. Um, and I, I won't name names because that would be petty except for to point out that I think it's a, since it's really hard to even do the self-help part of Eric style avoidance. Um, it's also difficult to help others at that level and to, that one of the only people I can think of who meets that criteria really fully and strictly is Lisa Patterson. Um, and so all I can say is that I'm not making this video with the intent of in any way shaming or calling out Lisa Patterson because She's one of the few people I think that has met that really strict um, criteria of learning Eric's lessons, but not just for oneself, um, learning it and trying to help others. And um, so I guess that's that. I, but uh, to get to, I'm rambling a little because I'm not doing that well in this room. This room is not very good. It's pretty contaminated. Um, 
and I need to get outside. Um, maybe I'll make another video outside where I'm feeling a little bit better. But, um, I, when I make a video and I say, here's how you can help me or save me, um, I mean, I assume I have lots of new followers, people who haven't been watching every single one of these, so you might not know my story or, or how hard I've worked at avoidance, but the point is not to just be necessarily really pathetic and always be begging for help, but this is something that inherently takes a village, avoidance. Um, the people who've done well it, it have had some kind of resources, whether it's family help or their own money and assets or um, mentors to help them. So if I'm asking for help, it's because uh, we legitimately need help, not because I'm just failing so hard, although I wouldn't say I'm succeeding at this point. Also, I want to end by saying, now that I brought up the controversial point of mold avoidance philosophy, I'm pretty sure people will say, well, what gives you the right to say that? I mean, you're not very successful, you're fairly sick. That is true, I am sick, and I am not that successful right now. But without, like, spending 10 minutes going over my life story and mold avoidance, I can talk about relative improvements versus absolute improvements and what gives me the right, so to speak, to talk about all this. So relative improvements with avoidance, mine have been huge. The absolute improvements have been led to have been bigger than with other treatments, but still led something to be desired and still not good enough. A absolute improvements is like what percentage out of a hundred percent out of fully recovered, where a hundred percent is fully recovered, healthy, normal. Is it and that so the percentage I've gotten of that has not been impressive. I wouldn't even say I've gotten to fifty percent at the best points, but. In terms of relative improvements, um, this actually, like when I was thinking about uh, n number scales of like whichever symptom getting better, um, in order to work on passing the invasive cervical traction, I w thought about like scales, percentages, a lot more. And what and if you think about um, maybe me going from like five or less percentage of what a normal healthy body is to thirty percentage, maybe even more. That doesn't look impressive as an absolute improvement. Thirty percent doesn't seem good, to, but the like multiplying the percentage relative change, that's huge. So me going from bedridden um, and having to crawl to the bathroom to walking like half a mile at a peak, I mean, I didn't measure it exactly, but that's about it. That doesn't look impressive when you're at the peak to people who aren't familiar with this, but for relative improvement, it's huge. Similarly, going from not being able to read like a paragraph to reading a whole difficult novel while in good air, that is a huge relative improvement. Um, there are other symptoms I can point to, but just those should be good enough for you to see what I'm um, talking about. So the point is I have gone to proscenary and despite financial difficulties and despite things like craniocervical instability, um, I have made huge relative improvements. The absolute improvements um, well better than other treatments have not been as huge as the relative improvements, but that's why I think, you know, I have something to say about this that should be listened to, is the relative improvements. Um, the differences, 
between before and after. Not um, that I'm, you know, getting to the point where I'm a bodybuilder or totally recovered, but um, the difference is. Um, so that's why.